everyone, it's Louise with Louise McCare and welcome to my channel. I'm really excited today because I have a collaboration that we're doing and we're doing it with uh, Karen from Waterfall Acrylics and Lori from Art Lore. And so we have a challenge. Karen asked me to do a, a collaboration and we decided between the three of us to do a challenge and we're doing three do's and three don'ts. And uh, I got the privilege of having Karen be the selector for my three do's and don'ts. And let me just go over them really briefly. So my do's, I must use blue, I must have negative space, and I must have at least one piggy. The don'ts, don't use a dryer or my mouth or your lungs, I'm, I'm imagining. No canvas smaller than 12 by 12 and no white. Well, let me just tell you, some of these are pretty restrictive for me <laughs> because in almost everything I do, I'm either using my mouth, using the hairdryer, or blowing through a straw. So without doing any air, uh, using any air today, I'm going to be really limited. And then, no white. Well, I almost always use my my uh, my multi pro, and I almost always use white cell activator. So those two big big restrictions are going to have a nice impact on me. So what I've got before you today is a, another Lazy Susan. And so just so you know, what I do to prep it, I, I do tape the back up. I tape the spinner to the Lazy Susan spin top so that when I have it on my turntable, it's spinning on the turntable and I'm not spinning my Lazy Susan to get it to go. So my Lazy Susan stays fixed and the spinner down below does all the work. And that way I have no herky-jerky, it's nice and smooth, and it, to me I find it works really well. For my pillow, that's where I've got the majority of my blue. I mixed up a really pretty blue base because I can't use white, and I didn't want to use black because it's just, you know, we use black all the time. So what I did is I went into my reserves and I pulled out some paints that I had sitting around I have my Georgian Bay, which I hadn't used yet, and the Tricorn Black, and I combined them together to get me started. But what I found when I first combined those together is that the paint was way too thin. So I had to thicken it up, and I had some scrap dark uh, paints from uh, pouring on black. So I pulled that out to use it, and then, it get, then my pillow got too dark. Then I had to lighten it up. And I decided I'm going to go with this. I added this Pearl Glacier Blue to it to make it hopefully be a really pearly pillow and and base coat so that with all the neg with negative space I'm going to get, I'll have some bling to it. So that was the thought process with that. Now for my colors. I've got my um, golden carbon black here. If you watch me, you'll know that with my gold, I always mixed my 24 karat gold with my iridescent gold by Golden because those two colors work really well together. The 24 karat brings the bling and the, and the gold by Golden brings the nice subtle soft gold prettiness to it. This here is mostly a TLP Frost and I added to it a little bit of the same color I put in that pillow which is the Pearl Glacier Blue, because I wanted to have something in here that had a little bit more binding to it. This is my bronze by Golden. It's uh, iridescent bronze. Let me stir it a little bit. And then last but not least, I have my combination of Caput Mortem Violet with Golden's Carbon Black. So this is Amsterdam's Caput and then Carbon Black by Golden. So with that, I'm going to get started. I have my cell activator. I have my oxide black, and it's my American Floatrol cell activator recipe. And then I have um, Titan Buff Deep that I'm using for my other cell activator. And again, this is my American Floatrol cell activator. Video 141, if you want to see how I make it. And it's going to be really interesting to see how that cell activator performs without using a hairdryer, without blowing on it. 
So let me just go ahead and get started here. Let's get the pillow down. So in the interest of time, I'm going to speed through this. If you watch me, you'll know I like to cut out the unnecessary or speed through it at least. All right, I'm going to start I'm going to start laying down my colors. And please forgive me as I often lay it down very slow and deliberately. So I'm going to pick up the pace through here and also maybe cut out a little bit here and there as I'm laying down the paint. So you can see what I'm doing and I'll also flash up the paint I'm using and also have it in the description. activator. I'm going to go on this big guy. I'm going to start with my black. I will pour this on. If you guys can see me. I don't know if I can see you. You guys are so far away. I am not used to being this far away typically. I'm also going to throw in here that even with the do's and don'ts, this is the first time I'm using this sized palette knife. Okay, so that's the black. Now I'll lay down the white. Or this is not white, this is the Titan buff. Move you guys out of the way. Let's stretch this stuff out a little bit. Let's give it a shot. Bottoms up. There we go. Crazy. There's relief when you get it done. At least I've gotten over my heart palpitations when I do this. Okay, let this kind of develop for a minute. I'll stretch it out. Let's see. Kind of break the surface tension here. Really hoping that that's going to start to cell activator is going to start coming up a little bit here. like to give this a little shape so let's just do this so typically by now I would have been blowing into the black cell activator at the top where it's not quite developed yet now the bottom the tail portion is fully developed with tons of cells so through here as I'm waiting for the cell activator to develop a little bit more I decide to just speed up and not skip so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just kind of waiting, playing around a little bit, trying to see where there's paint underneath and decide what I'm going to do. I end up going for my palette knives to decide how I'm going to play with this. The challenges definitely make you think about other ways of accomplishing things. There's got to be something going on in here. Come on.
trying to find the color that's in here. All right. Okay, so that's all just cell activator, okay. I wanna give this thing some shape. Let's bring you around a little bit. All palette knife moves. Let's give it a little. Let's uh, give it a little stretch and see what we get. Got to have negative space. If you've watched me before, you know when I start my spinning. I start very slow and deliberately. Let it work itself out very slowly and methodically. So I'm going to, I got to get a feel for how it's spreading before I dive right in to full spin. A full spin cycle. So I'm going to throw in here that I am already at 13 minutes, so I will be fast forwarding and skipping small portions here and there as we go forward. Okay, I need to go a little faster than that. Let's see if we can get it to move. Okay, got one side going. Let's move it over a little bit. Where you place it on the spinner has a huge impact on how it blows itself out, just from the centrifugal force. Caught you just in the nick of time. Let's give it a little bit more. I'm sure this is all gonna come off, but stretch it out a little bit. Okay, so we got it pretty covered now. Let's see where it walks to. Try to round this off a little bit. Give it a little more shape here. Check the edges. All right, I'd like the top to come off a little bit more.
I'm going to cut out some of this spin and then I'm going to focus my attention up top here where I'm trying to shape it into the shape of the spinner itself and round it off a little bit. A little more of that and I think I'll be getting there. off now hopefully preserving that shape so everyone I spend several minutes trying to round off that corner I will show you the final result at the end and then I'll do a final flyover after it's resined so everyone, I'm calling it a wrap, and this little clock is the inspiration for what became the Lazy Susan. This was my practice palette to make sure what I was going to do was going to work. And here are the final results of the Lazy Susan. I took this video out in the sun to try to capture all of the amazing pearlescence that's in the pillow and the bling and the shimmer that's in the gold in this piece. And I am really happy with how this turned out. And factoring in the do's and don'ts on this, I think it came out really, really nice. And it actually stretched me. It made me have to explore different options that is out of my comfort zone. And that is always good. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe, hit the bell and all. You'll get all my latest art tutorials. At the end, I will have a Lazy Susan and a clock playlist if you'd like to see. And now let's go over to Art Lore.